precious name for praise. Lord, he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Because of the 
good history. So there are three that there is directly in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these two are all one. And God blessed the reading of the Word. We thank God for his Word this morning. Let everyone pray. Most holy and all wise God, our Father, Lord, who art in heaven. Lord, we come before your throne this morning, Lord. We know we're not worthy. We know we're not. We realize that we're sinful and filthy rags. But God, but God, but God, Lord, we thank you that you allowed us to stand this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for last night's rest. Thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see a new day, a day we were not promised, a day we didn't deserve, but Lord, we thank you that we're walking around in this day, God. You've allowed us to see this day, and Lord, we just want to say thank you. Forgive us for every one of our sins. Clean us up, God, as only you can, and we thank you for all that you have done. For Lord, you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You are worthy, God. And Lord, you deserve all the glory, praise, and the honor is yours. Lord, help us not to take credit for anything that you have done. But Lord, help us to walk humbly in your will and in your way, God. Help us to be willing servants of you, God, that we will tell the world for God we live and for God we will die. Lord, we pray for this church, God, and churches everywhere, God. Everywhere. We pray, Lord, for every church that's having service this morning, God. Lord, churches that are standing on the wall, God, who are trying to proclaim your word and stand in this last and evil days. Lord, help us to be encouraged. Help us to keep on going on, God. And Lord, no matter what the enemy tries to do against us or what he tries to do to us, God, we will stay encouraged. We will stay on the battlefield. We will be battle ready. And we thank you, God. All the glory and praise is sure, God. Lord, if there be any sick among us, do what you do best, God. That's just be God. Do what you do best, God. That's meet needs. That's do what you do best, God. That's be a healer. Lord, touch God as only you can. And Lord, everyone who was in this building, Lord, let us not be the same. Let us feel the change. And let us know that we have been in your presence. We pray for the angel of this house that you will continue to work on him, God. You're not through with him yet, God. Lord, where he gets tired, strengthen him, God. Where he gets weak, God, encourage him, God. When he feels like throwing up his hands, say, that's it, God. Lord, tell him, no, not yet. There's more work for him to do. You have more for his love and companion, our first lady. Keep her, God. Be a healer for her, God. And we thank you for all that you have done. Lord, we declare and decree that it is so, God. And we, this is our prayer, God. And we submit it up to you. And we declare it done, God. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. It's in Jesus we pray, God.
of us, uh, Brother Lance Pope, he's going to do a, a dedication to his, his family. You know, amen. And we, we ask you to pray for him as he bring uh, this, this song and we'll have it. He sing. We'll be back with, with the word of God. I like to say something really quick. This song is called Broken People, and it really moved me because, as our cousin said, you know, our family has been broken, and most American, African American, Native American families have are broken and split. Amen. And the song is about Jesus, of course, but it reminds me of my mother. It reminds me of all the women. It reminds me of a mother's love. So I'm gonna dedicate this to my grandmother, Rena. My great grandmother, Rena, my mother, and all the mothers here. I'll just start it out the I love the way you embrace broken people like me. Whoa, I love the way you never turn away broken people like me. 
chose this particular scripture because we just come out of our revival here this past week and, and our theme was being better ready but but Lord dropped this scripture down in my bosom and I basically focused on it all week long concerning the man that was for 38 long years and 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 how the angel came down and troubled the water yes. there it but there you go. it reads again at verse 5 of John chapter 5 a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The infinite man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. If you will focus with me on that seventh verse which says, the infinite man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the waters trouble to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another step before me. Reading from the King James Version. If you will, look at your neighbor and and just 
shake your head and say, excuses, excuses, excuses. This morning with the Lord help, the spiritual guide, I'd like to use that thought. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Walk in heaven, Pastor. I want to make this disclaimer before I begin to make it perfectly clear that I'm not talking about any person in the city but Christians in general. Romans 1, 20 through 21 in the NIV tells us, for since the creation of the world, God invisible qualities, his internal power and divine nature has been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, that some people are without excuses. I believe some of you would agree with me in saying that some of us I said that to say some of us because I'm not going to exempt myself. If we are not careful, we'll find that adversity will cause us to lose out on our blessings if we don't keep our eye on the mark, which is Jesus Christ and stop making so many excuses. Now I'm right about it. Jesus did say the thief come not but to, to steal, kill, and destroy. And another one of his big arsenals is excuses. We all have made excuses a time or two, a three, four, five. Well, maybe I need to leave that alone. As kingdom builders, we make too many excuses to why we can't complete our assignment and get to our healing. Now if you are not a Christian, it's, it's not my desire that you accept him today because it's my desire that you would. Mm -hmm. But to those of us that have put our hand to the gospel plow, it is time out for us making excuses if we want to be blessed of God. To have a reason for not completing an assignment or getting to your blessing and make an excuse for not completing these things is like faith, unfaithfulness keeping you from a falsely truth. You see, reasons apply that fault is sincere, recognized, and accepted. That you step up and take accountability for your action. An excuse exists to justify the blame to defend fault with the intent to absolve oneself of any accountability. So today, I want to exegete, not exegete, this text because I want to point 
out a different aspect of this story concerning a man at the pool they call Bethesda. Bethesda. To give you a brief synopsis, or a synopsis, Jesus had returned to Jerusalem for a feast holy day, which lasts three days. Inside the city, near the Sheep Gate was a pool called Bethesda. It had five porches. Crowds of people, blind, lame, paralyzed, they laid on the porch. And one of the men lying there had been laying there for 38 long years. Now there's some of us here today that's been sitting on that porch Jesus. knowing that God is a healer, Amen. knowing that he is a deliverer, yes. knowing that he come to give liberty and set the captives free. You still sit on that porch of anxiety, mm. depression, and all other manners of things that have attacked the mind and the body. Now, the water at the pool was popularly believed to possess a creative power because the man who was healed after 38 years experienced an outpour of God's mercy on the Sabbath. But one of the things that I want you to take notice of is that the man was at the pool and the man said that every time he stepped in the pool that someone stepped in front of him. Now, maybe some of you have been to, to, to Walt Disney World or or been to the racetracks or some other theme park. And they have the thing they call a fast pass. And what it does, it means that if you purchase it, you can step out and you can get ahead of the one that's already in line. Now I'm going somewhere with this. Now what Jesus did is that this man sitting at the pool, we basically look at it as him stepping in the pool and, and being healed by the pool. But actually Jesus told a man to take up his bed and walk. In other words, the man never made it to the pool because God gave him a fast path because everybody that was in line. The reference to the pool being stirred by angels in the last part of the third verse and the first part of the fourth verse are not found in either the, the old or the major manuscripts. However, regardless of the disagreements among manuscripts of the name of the pool or the angel message, the pool did exist. And I stopped by today to let you know that spiritually, in your mind, the pool can still exist. Healing is God's divine work through instruments and ways he choose to bring help to persons who sit physically, emotionally, and spiritually. The Bible not only tells the people spiritually status, but it's also concerned about physical condition. Christians are often confused about ministry of healing, but these biblical teachings 
teaching is clearly apparent in our Bible. First, the Bible clearly states that Jesus believed in healing the body. Secondly, Jesus spoke of darkness in a positive way to, as he compared those in good health who had no need of a physician and others that did. In other words, in Matthew 9 and 12, he tells us that when Jesus heard that, he said to them that our whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Yes. God has often healed by ways that indicate that no matter what science has tried to say or, or predict, God has ways of touching the body and healing the body yes. that can blow any scientist's mind. Thirdly, the method of healing Jesus used include prayer, laying on a hand, anointing with oil, and the assurance of forgiveness of sin. We find in the church uh, continue to use these methods as we find in James 14 to 16 when it says, if any are sick among you, let them call the elders of the church and then pray over them and anoint them with oil. Finally, Jesus did not use healing as a means of gaining attention or trying to keep uh, it private. But what he did, he did because that's just what he knew. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 tells us to everything there is a season and a time and purpose under the heaven. Look at someone and tell them it's all in the time. The secret of having peace with God is to discover in itself, in itself God, perfect time. There is danger in doubting or resenting God's time. This can lead to despair, rebellion, and moving ahead without God's guidance. We don't have any problem at reading the Amiat I'm an act planning God for the nature of, of harvest. But we make excuses whenever it comes to God's plan. Yes. Jeremiah 29, 4 through 14, it says that God has a purpose and a plan for you. Yes, yes. His plans are sure, pure, and faithful. God's plan for you is to purpose and to grow spiritually in Christ in every situation and you are in right now. Yes. Proverbs 22 and 13, it says, a lazy person claims there are lines out there. Yes, if you go outside, I might get killed. Uh -huh. What this proverb referred to is that and the excuse of a lazy person yes. might be used to avoid them from getting their blessings. The excuse sounds silly to us, but how often do we make excuses uh, and try to rationalize our excuses yeah. when we don't even have to? Uh, it's all about us going about our father's business. Uh, I want you to know today that even some of us today may have got up out of your bed. You may not have wanted to come to church today. And maybe you made excuses all down through the week. There's been times that God has given you a revelation and spoke to your heart and mind. When you felt your heart flutter or when you had a pain in your body and he said it was time for you to go to the doctor and see what's going on. But you made an excuse 
and say, I got to go to work today. And sometimes men folks, uh, when we got pain in our body uh, and we know that we need to go to the doctor, uh, we'll make excuses uh, for not going to the doctor. It's time out uh, for us to stop uh, making excuses uh, because it's not about us. Uh, it's about those uh, that God called us to serve. Uh, and as we look at our lesson today, uh, we find that we need uh, a mercy here. Yes. And God, he had mercy on these people. Uh, these people, they had various diseases. Uh, they had disabilities. Uh, and they were all sitting on the porch, uh, blind, uh, yes. lame, uh, paralyzed. Uh, these diseases uh, was all occupied. Uh, on the porch, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, we go through so much uh, in a lifetime, uh, and there's so many things uh, that attacks our body uh, unknowingly. But when God speaks to us uh, and tells us to get up uh, off our do nothing, uh, to tell us uh, to get up off uh, the porch uh, and go see about uh, the situation. Uh,
I try to hold on. But I just haven't received the answer yet. The doctor said his illness is too far advanced, and now what's the use of praying? I just got laid off my job. My pride won't let me take a lesson job. Ministry is not doing good now. It's requiring too much of me. I stopped working in the church because it doesn't seem like nobody else is doing anything. Excuses, excuses, excuses. It seemed that Moses had developed a serious inferiority complex because in his past failure, which had occurred 40 years before he fled from Egypt as a murderer, murderer. Moses obviously had never forgiven himself for his past. This caused Moses to give God excuses for not wanting to obey his call. God gave positive results to Mark Moses' excuses and assured him that he would succeed in doing God's will through divine and ability. Romans 1, 20 and 21 tells us, since the creation of the world is visible, his natural power, divine nature, been seen. And as I said earlier, people are without excuses. We must understand, my brothers and sisters, God does not accept excuses. God will place a conviction on us and all the excuses that have come up will cause us to lose power and the thing that he has called us to do. If God tells us to do something he expected to get done, well, the crippled man, he made excuses. But in the end, God told him what he had to do. In a sense, God spoke these words of mercy to each of us at a point in our life as a go to the sea. Said, rise up from your place of failure and inability and despair. Take up that which has been a emblem of your slackness and walk in the newness of the Lord. There are four seasons in a year, spring, summer, and fall, and they all follow regularly. Each has its own life, own temperature, and weather pattern, and it repeats yearly. But I stop by to encourage your heart today and let you know in the spiritual realm of God, there is a fifth season and that's your season. But you'll never be blessed if you keep on making excuses. You need to know that it's your season. You need to stop giving space to the devil and let God have his way. Stop letting people dictate your healing. Stop letting people dictate your praise. Stop letting people dictate your breakout and your breakthrough. Don't you know that God got a plan for you? Don't you know if you cannot be healed, if you don't follow God's direction, maybe you have been contemplating when God's going to come and fulfill the promise in your life. Well, I declare and decree on this day, your testimony has been heard of God. And right now, 
It's the right time to receive your blessing. You got to stop making excuses and continue to press toward the mark. There's nothing you can do in your own time. But if you wait on the Lord patiently, He will surely, He will surely come to your path. My brothers and sisters, this man has been sick a lame for 38 for long years. I don't know if anybody in here can beat that record. He didn't know how to get out of his disability. But he's there. But I stopped by today to tell you how you can get out anything or you are in Thank you. 
today is the day of salvation. Maybe you don't know him for the pardon of your sin. Maybe you're one of those that have been sitting on the porch and making excuses. Sometimes we say, well, I've done drugs, I, I drank. And, and my past has caught up with me, and that's the reason on this porch. But what I want you to know and understand is that no matter the reason you are out on that porch, the pool wasn't trolled just for certain people. And the scripture said the first one that stepped in was healed. He said every season he came in trouble to water. But every since Jesus got up out of grace, every day, every day, he's waiting for you to step into your promise. The pool is full of promises. You just got to step out into it. So, if you don't know him today, you're going through something today, know that today is the day of salvation. Come here. Again, I extend this invitation that if you don't know him, go to part of this. I offer you the same Jesus that I came to one day. I was a rancher of duns, on my way to a devil's head. And couldn't nobody stop me from getting there but Jesus. Preacher couldn't stop me from getting there. Mom and dad couldn't stop me from getting there. The deacon and the mother, they couldn't stop me from getting there. The only one that could stop me from getting in hell was Jesus. So if you don't know him today, I extend the hand of discipleship. He said, if you believe that Jesus Christ hung, bled, and died, and got up early on Sunday morning, and that he is the Son of God, he said, thou shalt be saved. He said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus shall be saved. No difference between the Jew or the Greek. In other words, it don't matter how much money you got, no matter what kind of job you got, no matter what you live in, what you drive in, don't matter about none of these things. Jesus, he came for us all. Never take that many standing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for allowing your Holy Spirit, Lord, to come into this place. We thank you, Lord, for loosening your power. Oh, here we thank you, Lord, for your Shekinah glory, your Holy Ghost that came, Lord, that kept us all through service. We ask you to continue to keep us. Father, we extend the invitation to the law. No one can work. But, Father, you know the heart of each and every one that's here on the day. If they don't know you as a part of your sin today, Lord, please continue, Lord, to wrap on their hearts, knock on their door. That they may say who's there and ask you to come in. Do something to them, do something to them. Father, we thank you right now. Father, we ask you, Lord, just continue, Lord, to just bless every household that's here on the day. Bless this family that came here to die. So, Father, walk with that. We ask you to bless this family, Lord. Bless their rising up, they're sitting down, they're going out, they're coming in. Thank you, Lord, for giving them, Lord, giving them the, the time and the time. Desire, Lord, to come together as a family, Lord. Yes, sir. Again, Lord, we, we thank you. We ask for you to reach out, Lord, and touch other families the same way that they want to come together. Because one day, Lord, one day you're coming back for a church, a church by the bottom of the land. And 
Father, and we want to be rid of that day from us. Father, we thank you right now. Thank you, Lord, for our very God here in this church. I do ask you to remember to minister all of us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we thank you for all the things that those who are sick and the rest home, those in the hospital, Lord, prison, wherever they may be, Lord, we ask what you say right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for praying. It's our prayer in name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Certainly, we thank each and every one of you for being with us here on this day. We ask that you continue, Lord, to, to pray for this church family. We know that God is ready to do something great for you. Amen. Amen. It's still trouble. All you have to do is still have to the best. The, the Bible, this Bible here, is impregnated with blessings. There's nothing in here that can't heal. Deliver you from any and everything that you're going to do. God be the glory. This time we're going to depart and we look to the hill. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Rest, rule the Bible is now, forevermore. We dismiss ourselves by saying the three are for our men.